Hello all, welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous little bracelet oh, <laughs> that we promised you we would do this week. We promised you to do it yesterday but shh, don't tell anyone we're a day late. Um, but for today's tutorial you will need to have um, a cotton that is number, let's get close, here we go. That's an eight ply, a number three or a DK weight. Okay, you can use a thicker weight if you like, just watch the stitch count, all right? So you will need some cotton, you won't need much, very, very minimal. I don't even think I used 20 grams of it, really. I don't think I used more than 10 even. You will need the hook used for your cotton. I used a four millimeter hook. That is what the cotton calls for. You will need a scissors. You will need four stitch markers in orange, four in green if you remember to put them in like Naughty Me was forgetting. But you will need four, well, don't have to be those colors, but you will need four of each color, okay? You will need your gray lead. You will need that darning needle. You will definitely need that, but you will need it also to be able to go through your um, beads. Okay, if this needle does not go through to your beads, you cannot use it. So what I'll be doing is popping all the beads on the needle and then we'll be crocheting them to the piece. The choice of the beads was up to our subscribers. How they chose and how I put it all together, well, I'm about to show you within the tutorial. So we're not going to talk about it anymore. We're just going to get together and make this gorgeous little bracelet. Good luck, guys. Alrighty, guys, here are the beads that we used in last week's practice project. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I asked some subscribers to have a look at the numbers that you see and choose some of those numbers for our bracelet this week. And to those subscribers who are lovely enough to do that, I printed off your requests. <laughs> what? They're thinking, what? <laughs> yes, I did. And we're going to go through that in a moment. Um, but for those of you, again, who have not seen last week's practice, there's a little picture right there. Gorgeous. If you would like to do that practice swatch before continuing, uh, I will leave a link in a description box down below. Very first link that you come to. And you can head off and practice and then come back to us and do our bracelet with us. For the rest of us, yay, yay, get excited. Now, here are those people who um, requested. Now, Anne McSee, she's one of our regulars. She has requested, my choice is three or 10. Well, guess what, Anne? We're gonna use both. Now, before we do, I just wanted to show you the color of the yarn that we are using today. And now this yarn is, let me get that out of the way. Oh, for those of you who don't know this, I purchased this yarn to make our poncho here at Wild Crochet Designs. And the poncho is called the Rustaman Vibrations Poncho. Was <laughs> created here at Wild Crochet Designs. Um, I'll just show you a quick picture right there. Gorgeous. If you wanted to create that poncho, I've left a link in a description box down below. It's called the Rustaman Vibrations Poncho. Um, and we never got that opportunity to use this particular color in that poncho, okay? So I ended up, you know, having a bit of a play with the thread. As you can see there, it's been used. Um, and it was, and still is, um, an eight ply, which is a number three or a DK weight overseas. And it's 100% cotton. So we are using an eight ply cotton or a number three or a DK weight today. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is because Honestly, I do not want to use the same color beads as the cotton. So I wouldn't actually, you could, and it's entirely up to you, I wouldn't choose something like that. I would try and choose something differently just because that's me. But if you wanted to choose the same color, by all means, you can do that. Now, Anne McSee has chosen number three or number 10, and we are going to use both of them, okay? Different colors, of course. So let's go over to number three. Oh, let's see if we can do this here we go there we go there's number three right there all right so i would choose between whatever colors are here and i think i might choose a pink okay and there's one for Anne mcsee now she said or 10 but guess what we're going to choose 10 as well oh i like that color right there and i'll leave the red for something more fun let's choose this color right here it's kind of like a greeny you know, a bit of a gold in there unusual color yeah so that was Anne mcsee's choices Let's have a look at the next one on the list. Family Clan says, I would pick just eight and nine. I think they look good together. Thanks, Mary, for the clear explanation. Oh, thank you, um, Family Clan. But you know what? I'm going to pick 
8 and 9 as well as the colours that we are choosing. So let's have a look at your 8 and 9. There we go. So 8 and 9, we've already got a pink and an unusual colour. Let's get something different. Let's try the light green. Oh, look at that. Very nice, very nice. All right, and that's, and she wanted nine. Oh, a tiny little one in here. Let's try, ooh, what's in here? What's that one there? That one there looks like a, it's like a creamy color. Check that out. Look at, like a peachy cream, very unusual color. Let's pop that number nine back in there. And there we go, let's bring that out again. Move that over and let's see what the next person said. And the next person is Paula Mahoney. And Paula has chosen, I love 11, but all are beautiful thanks again so paula where's 11 this is 11 right here let me blow that up for you all okay let's see some of the colors that we already have so number 11 is right here right there all right so these are the colors we already have we're not going to choose a blue okay so what color can we choose let's have a look here oh i like that one right there oh look, this is a flowery color Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's like a red. No, you know what? Let's get that little peach color that I liked right there. That's actually quite nice. Yes? Okay, and that was Paula's color. So let's pop that out the way. That list is done. Uh, Jody uh, Mann. Jody Mann is actually one of our current winners of the current blanket that we're going to be doing in a few weeks' time called Pretty as a Peacock. Um, so for those of you who are new to our channel, we do giveaways all the time and Jodie is one of the ones who won recently. Now Jodie has actually asked us for um, beads 1, 6, 8 and 14. So she's asked us for quite a few. So let's have a look at number 1 right there. Oh, very interesting colours. Alright, let's grab a dark. Oh no, you know what, let's try and see what else there is. Um, all right, we'll get a dark one. We'll get a dark one. Oh, it's, it's kind of a blue, but it's not the same blue as ours. So that's okay. You can get away with that. Oh, what were they? Um, six. Next one was six. Oh, six, a very interesting one. Check out number six. Unusual or what? Mm, let's have a look what we've got here. What can we get? Let's try. Oh, I don't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh maybe you know what i really even though that's like a peachy color i really love this color right here and look where you have to thread that one right through the top it's going to be an every, a very interesting one that one so she's chosen one six we want eight eight is right here where's eight right there what color can we choose i see a gray let's try a gray why not next one is 14 14 is oh where's 14 Oh, right here. This is 14 right here. All right. What colors can we choose here? 14. Oh, very interesting colors we've got here. Mm, let's go. I don't know. I don't know. Let's try a red. A red. Why not? That's 14. Yes. And um, red is my favorite color. So I'm trying to hold out for the nice, <laughs> the nice one. <laughs> but there we go. All right. So that's Jody's done. The next one is Franca. The lovely Franca was after... Um, number four. Now we've already chosen a four, I think. Yes, we have the light pink, but you know what? We're going to choose yet again another one. What color shall we choose that we don't already have? We don't have a dark pinky color or purple or light purple, whatever you want to call that. So that is Franca's one. And the next one is JJ's, the last one today. We've got four, nine, 11, and 12. So four, well, we've already chosen, but we're going to choose again. Oh, and I like that one, although it's the same as the orange, so we'll leave that one. Let's get into some darker colours. Oh, hang on, here we go. What's that? Oh, that one right there. Oh, it's a very similar colour to that. Let's have a look. Oh, very similar. We're running out of colour shades now. <laughs> oh, look at this one. Oh, check that one. I think we'll take that one. Yeah. Um, so four, nine. She wants nine. Nine is right here. Very itty bitty. We've already got one of those. But we'll choose another colour. Oh, what colour? Oh, what colour shall we choose? Oh, we're running out of colours. There's a very, very light pink. Oh, no, it's very similar to the other one. Oh, no, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. It's so tiny. You won't be able to tell. All right, so she's chosen nine. Now we need 11 and 12. 11, we've already had one, but we'll get another one. So let's go for 
um, that brownie color 11 it's kind of like a it's like a brownie greeny color yeah and 12 is this one right here all right so we've mixed some of our little flowers in there which shouldn't be in there but anyway uh, let's go for this green right here oh that's very similar to that one we might not oh I'm losing my beads all at once uh, let's go for mm, num, 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 num. there's not many colors here is there <laughs> we're running out of colors um, okay let's do that color let's do that color all right we're good to go that's it these oh wait actually I didn't see that three see right there hidden right at the side there so let's go and get another three because we've already chosen three before we're going to get another one what color shall oh i like that pinky one right there how's that was that the same one i got before no it's a it's a lighter one okay we're good to go guys we are good to go let's close up shop so what you have here <laughs> this bead's really going to annoy me what you have here is a whole lot of beads now i've decided that for my bracelet I would like to use the big one that Jody has chosen as a button bead. So one that will actually pop on my wrist so that we can do the button up. All right. So all the other beads we have here, pop them in kind of like an order that you would like them in it. It doesn't really matter. There's no real way of doing this. I'm just going to pop them in any kind of order. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way. I decided to put all of my thicker beads more in the middle and the thinner ones uh, closer to the edges okay not for anything I just wanted to try something different and see how it goes if it doesn't look good oh well that's my problem right <laughs> well you like that so just grab your thread okay and just take oh, I don't know a little bit off yeah oh, I've just messed up my design oh that's no good was it like that? Tell me, guys. <laughs> well, you can't now because <laughs> it's not live. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll leave it like that. Now, this is really frayed, this thread, so I'm going to give it a cut. So, thread your needle. Okay. Let's go like that. Way up there. Thread your needle. Black saw. And there you go. Let's move these scissors, everything out the way. You won't need those yet now all you need to do is decide um, it doesn't really matter you just decide how you want your beads to go I am going to put uh, one bead on first and that's one row it goes through your needle and push down a little bit and I might just make that little tail a little shorter just so that I can work through the beads easier and then I'm going to get another one so I'm doing one side first okay one side first and it doesn't matter which side because it's entirely up to you how you wanted your beads to go now you did see the picture at the beginning of the work the promo so you knew exactly how i was going to have my beads anyways but this is the way you put them if you want them the same as what you saw in the promo oh i knew these ones were going to give me grief <laughs> i knew it so just keep going i'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do it i'll just take that last one that I'm going to use as a button now you don't have to use it as a button um, but I'm going to so pop it in there like so and then you start in the opposite direction so that's the buttons that's going to be opposite the, that side that we just did all right so you're going the opposite direction so go ahead put the rest of the buttons on I'll pop this on fast motion so you don't have to sit here and watch me do them okay and off we go Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of the row and there you go, ta-da, they're all there. Alright, so now take out your needle, just push them all down. Now you're going to need a lot of thread for the first two rows, okay? We're not using the beads at all, so take out a little bit of thread like so. Alright, and then grab your needle and just take it out, yes. And we start all right the way we start is a basic way of starting and that's just making a quick slip knot and doing your chains how many chains do you need I hear you ask no matter what happens you will need an even amount of 
single crochets in your first row. So whatever odd amount that will be, and I'll explain that to you in a minute, but let's just start with making a quick slip knot, grabbing your tail end, wrapping it around your finger once and twice, holding it there, holding it there, grab the back loop, pass it halfway over, hold it there, grab your other loop all the way over your finger and just pop your hook in and give everything a tug. All right, now, Right here. Before we start, just remember we are chaining up um, an odd amount in this row so we can make an even amount in the other row. We are going to chain one and the chain is yarn over your hook. Let me get a bit of close up here. Alrighty, we're going to chain one and a chain is yarn over your hook and pull it through the loop on your hook. That's one. Yarn over, two and three, four. All right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what we're going to do is we're going to chain up 20 to begin with. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We're just going to keep it even for now. Lift up your loop, grab your little um, thread, this is going to be too small for me, but I wanted to show you. You've got to wrap it around your wrist. Now, I know for a fact that's too small for me, but it might be perfect for you. Okay. If it's perfect, just wait there until we catch up with you. So we've got 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Now, I know for a fact that 26 is my number. Uh, because I've practiced this earlier, but I'll put it on anyway and show you. So all I have to do is just grab it and what you need to do is make sure that your piece will fit your arm. I'm sorry, let's try wrist. Will fit your, <laughs> if I can pick it up, will fit your wrist perfectly and it does. That is just the fit. Now we're going to add the chains to pop on um, an extra four chains on both sides to pop on a button and button hole. Now you can't do them on both sides because we've already, you know, chained there. So really all you need to add on is an extra eight chains. So you've got your 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. That's your four chains. 31, 32, 33, 34. And that's your eighth chain. But when we put a single crochet, we don't put it in there. We put it in that next stitch, all right? That gets tightened up. So you need an odd chain to make it the rest of your stitches even. So you need one more. So if you tighten that stitch up, it's not classified as a stitch, okay? All right, so we're going to make that very first single crochet in that stitch there. All right, so pop your hook in that loop, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, grabbing a stitch marker any color for now, it doesn't matter. And pop it in your first single crochet. That is just to show you where to slip stitch at the end of the row. Sorry, that might be too far for you guys. Now what we're going to do is single crochet in every stitch all the way across the row. Take your time, no rush. Just remember you are not using your beads in this row, okay? You're just doing Plain old single crochet. Oh, hence the word old, I know. It's one of the most popular stitches. This one, the double and the half double. The three stitches are the most popular stitches in crochet. The main stitches to use in crochet. So there you go. Some of my stitches are really tight. <laughs> but don't tell the subscribers. They don't need to know that, Mary. <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do it. So head off and put your single crochet all the way into that stitch right there. And I shall meet you up in a moment. Alrighty guys, I have two little stitches left. They're very tight there. So I'll just put one single crochet in that second last one. And right here, you can actually see that last one tucked right in there. All right, don't forget that last stitch. All right, now what I need you to do is to count your stitches along. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Let me bring it back up. Count your stitches all the way across. And you need to, no matter what you are around here, grab your little piece and pop it around like so and it should have 
a bit of extra right there and they are the four single crochets on each side all right so grab your little piece and count your stitches because it's really important that no matter what you have that you have an even amount so if I ended up, I know mine's 34 because I counted them off air before, but if I ended up with 35, I would have to take this undone, add another chain and come back and do 36 or take off a chain and do 34. Okay, so no matter what you've got here, make sure it's an even amount of stitches across. Mine is 34 and I'm going to leave it at that. All right, now this is our, we'll leave that out actually, this is our bead row you need to take four in fact what you do to show you you need to grab four so there's one two three and four okay that's the four in the beginning of the row that will be no beads there okay and grab the green just for fun one two three four and that's the four at the end of the row with no beads except when it's time to put our button on it which we won't worry about for now so now what we're going to do is we need to count our stitches from here to here and the way we count our stitches are these little v's that you see right here they look like v's when you face them this way now including our stitch marker you go one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and your stitch marker makes 28 stitches across. Now we have on the first section of beads, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A little bit tricky with math, but what you've got to do is to be able to calculate uh, 7 into 28 lucky that goes okay 7 fours are 28 so we really need four um, stitches and things all the way across but let me explain to you how we're going to do your math and that way you can sort yours out now I'm going to use the back of this piece of paper no point wasting anything all right so what we're going to do across the row is we're going to put single crochets now imagine those little sticks you see there let me get a close up will be single crochets and the circles will be chains all right so what we're going to do is put our 28 stitches across in single crochet and chains okay so what I want you to do is the first single crochet is your stitch marker right one st single crochet there oh, I'm sorry let me give you a close-up like that then you're going to be chaining two one and two and then you're going to be popping two single crochets and then you're going to be chaining two and two single crochets and if i don't do these any smaller i'm not going to fit them across so i'm just going to make them a little bit smaller chaining two putting two single crochets chaining two putting two single crochets but before you continue that's bead i'm sorry that's bead one bead two bead three just imagine they're going in the middle of your chains but they're not just imagine they are um, bead four and then you do your single crochets and your doubles I'm sorry then you do your Mary get it right then you do your chains and then your single crochets that's bead five and then you do your chains and your single crochets that's bead six and then you do your chains and your single crochets that's bead seven no I'm sorry don't worry about that one because that's your last bead okay so what you've got there if you count them you should have 28 across if you're anything like me if you don't have that and you've got more beads then you need to mess around with your numbers let's count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 now don't worry about that one like I said before because that's going to be your set of one two three that's your one two three four at the end of the row sorry no matter frame and that's your one two three four at the end of the row okay so let's just imagine that that is what we're doing all right when we start this row we are going to do our single crochet one two three and four so we go one two three and four and that's where our single crochet will be okay don't worry about all of this right now but in between here 
from here to here is where you need to pop your bead. So let's say for argument's sake, this is your four, right? There's your four single crochets. In fact, that looks like that anyway. The very next stitch you're going to do in the next stitch right there will be a bead, okay? It's not going to land exactly in the middle, but when you put the bead on, it takes up so much space that it looks like it lands in the middle. None of this makes sense right now because we're not doing any chains, okay? All we're doing is adding the beads to this round, but we want to add the bead after the fourth stitch. So there's your fourth stitch, and on your next stitch, we're adding the bead, okay? And on your next stitch, you're just doing a single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochet three and then you're adding the bead now we can do that together but that's pretty much where i want you to it's a little bit confusing at the moment but once we do it together you'll understand if your beads do not add up the same as mine i'll say this is where the chain two are supposed to be so you need to add your bead first and then do a single crochet and you'll know, you'll know that when i start doing it all right i know it's a little a little bit too much information there but once you want, once you see this, you'll understand it, all right? And I don't know what I've done there. Look at that. I don't know how that worked, but let's try. Hello, wake up, Mary. Here we go. All right. So we're going to start adding our beads, but not yet, all right? The first four single crochets will just be that, single crochets. But before you do, you are chaining one. Yes? And then you're turning your work doesn't matter which way you turn it, just remain consistent throughout your work. From here, we're going to be popping a single crochet in our stitch. And our stitch is, you see those two loops right there? They go on top. And if you really want to see your stitch, just give your work a stretch. And there's your stitch in there. So single crochet in your first stitch, like that. Like that. Yes? Single in your second, right there. The two loops on top, the V on top, I should say. And two loops single in your third now you're ready to put a single in your fourth which is what you're going to do so take out that stitch marker for a moment and pop a single crochet in that fourth stitch right there all right now let me show you where you are so you understand you have done one two three and four sorry about that scribble there guys now you've got your two chains. We're not putting those two chains in. They're going in in a couple of more rows. What we're doing is putting our first bead right there. All right, so bring your bead, push it right up to your work, right up to your hook nice and snug, and then just pop a single crochet in that next stitch, moving your bead over, and pull your loop through like that. That's your first, let's pretend that's a chain. We know it's a single crochet. That is your very first chain you come to there. Now we're going to do another single crochet, one, two, and three. The chains don't make sense yet. They will in a minute. So you're going to do one, two, three single crochets now. All right. So one, two, and three single crochets i've got the beads coming up i'm not going to move them because we're going to need one now push all the other ones away and just push that bead right up and i'll show you where you are and you are now here you've done your one two three single crochets we're going to pop a bead and do three single crochets all right i hope you're understanding what i'm doing here Again, it's not going to make sense until we do those chains later, and then it'll make sense. Okay, so you've got your bead there, and now you're going to grab your hook, go into the very next stitch, pushing that bead up towards you. Just grab that tail end, pulling it through, give yourself a single crochet. And now we're doing three single crochets. One, two, and three three single crochets yes then we're going to do another bead grab your next bead I pushed mine too far away <laughs> okay all right and now you're going to do that single crochet around this bead 
just making sure you're going through two loops I just went through one there make sure you go through the two loops now my bead is really big here so I'm just gonna pop that through like that doing my single crochet and then you do three single crochets across one two three single crochets make sure you're not missing any stitches or you will be short at the end of this round because you did your math yeah push your little bead up pop it on whoops make sure you've got it on there before you do the rest like that and now you're doing three single crochets across one two three single crochets grab your next bead really big one this one <laughs> just do your single crochet around your bead make sure you're doing it around the bead oh, that is a really big bead that one there you go <laughs> one two whoops two and three single crochets now before I continue I'll do the third one I'm going to check that bead it looks really loose to me and I'm just going to have a quick look if you've got some beads that you're doing have a look see if it's too loose look how loose that is I'm not really happy that one's not bad it's tight right up there the other ones they're nice and tight now I know straight away that that was too loose so I'm going to take my three undone you don't need to do this this is just for me because mine's too loose make sure yours are nice and tight when you do them otherwise you're going to have that look and you don't want that look all right now that's really going to really annoy me <laughs> all right so make sure yours are really tight this part here is pulled tight right there do your single crochet and now I'm happy look how tight that is and now you're doing your three single crochets if you're anything like me and had to take yours undone if not just wait there a moment and this is where right here where we were up to before all right so grab your next bead and we haven't got up to the seventh one yet this is the sixth one I think I'll work that out in a minute so grab your next bead pop your hook in pull that bead right up and then just pull a loop through tighten it up make sure your bead is not too loose like mine was finish off your single crochet and do three across one two and three so if you played your cards right what you should have left is one two three stitches and one little bead left before the end of this row okay so that's not including your button bead just the one bead okay all right so now what you've got to do oops <laughs> I forgot to bring the bead bring your bead down like so you're going to do a single crochet in that bead right there if you can get around it <laughs> tighten it up because mine's really loose tighten that up and then just do one and two all right you might have ended up with three might have ended up with two you really should have ended up with two like I did but it doesn't matter all right it doesn't matter at all because when you pull that loop up all seven of your beads are in some kind of order all right so they're kind of in the middle and it doesn't really matter let's do this and let's have a little play before we continue the round and let's pop it around our wrist just for fun well, it's a bit hard to do it with all the stitch marker and everything on it the beads on it but there you go so far that's what you have we've got a long way to go yet guys this we need firstly to finish off the rest of this round to take out your stitch marker I'm sorry let's try row take out your stitch marker move everything out the way for a moment and let's just finish this row single in your next single in your next and single in your stitch marker stitch right there all right take that stitch marker out by the way guys don't do what I just did okay and there you go what you're going to do here let's move that out the way I think I forgot to put a stitch marker in the beginning of the round sorry about that guys it's going to be a bit tricky now never mind <laughs> so what we do now is we chain one turn our work 
same way you did before and in your first stitch you're putting single crochet single in your next single in your next single in your next however close you are to your beads just keep going once you get to that bead area just be weary you've got a single right there see these two v's you need to put a single in each one of these v's so don't miss any pop a single and it has to go through both the loops so just be weary it's a bit tight there you might miss that second loop pop it in there pop it in your next and there you go now you're doing your single singles <laughs> all the way across your row remembering once you get to your bead make sure you get your two loops in there all right there and one right next to it there and away you go all right that it's a little bit of a tricky row but and it was a bit tricky working out the math but once you see the next row you'll understand what i meant by chains now there's a tight single but that's a single remember we tightened up that stitch before or i did anyway okay so you're not using your beads in this round you are just doing a round I keep calling it a round let's try row you're just doing a row of single crochets all the way across okay and there you go moving my beads out the way look at them look what's happening over here <laughs> just give me one moment guys all righty let's move those beads out the way i don't know what happened there everything just got all tangled up and knotted and everything but there we go so just keep doing your single all the way across pop this on fast motion for you and then until we get to the end of the row we'll talk about what we're going to do once we get there so just keep going Alrighty guys, there's a real tight one right in there. Just be weary. We're at the end of the row now, almost. Okay. Just make sure you're not missing any stitches. And here we are at the end of the row. Right, this is where I forgot to put a stitch marker for you. I'm a bit of a duffer. Sorry guys. Right there. There you go. Like so. Alright. So, move your beads out the way this is what you should have Ta -da! <laughs> it's a bit twisted it's a bit twisted but that'll sort itself out later there we go ta-da there you go all your little beadies are on and you've done one row of single crochets now this is where we're going to add the button i should say the bead that we're going to be using as a button okay so you're chaining one like normal and you know what? I forgot to put a stitch marker even on that side. I'm doing well with the stitch markers. I'm very naughty. Turn the work. It's because I don't use them off air. I'm very naughty. Pop a normal single crochet in your first stitch. And one in your next stitch. Hold it there. We are now going to add a bead right here. The button bead. All right. So just grab your bead and push it right up. If you're using a button bead, if you're not, don't worry about adding a bead. Uh, just add the button at the end and I'll show you what you can do to add that at the end. But we're adding a button bead, or I am. So I'm popping a, a stitch around that next stitch, which is the third single crochet, if you're not adding a button bead. So just do a third single crochet. And then I'm doing my fourth single crochet right there. Now, remember those chains that I was talking about over here, right there, right there. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to start the chains. That's happening right now. We've done our one, two, three, four. Now we're going to start our two chains, okay? So it's chain one and two, but we're not putting our single crochets in the stitches. We're putting a half double from here, okay, in between each bead there'll be a half double until we get to our last one. After the last bead, we're going to be putting a single. But don't worry about that for now. Let's just focus on the half doubles that we're doing. So now we're going to be skipping one, 
and two single crochet. So you're skipping the one, skipping the two, and you're popping a half double in the third one. Now a half double is yarn over your hook, skip one, two, pop your hook in that third stitch, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Okay, chain one and two, yarn over your hook, we're going to be doing a half double in the third stitch. So you're skipping one, two, and pop your hook in, pull a loop through, three loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Chain one and two, and half double, one, two, in your third one, like so. Chain one and two, and a half double, one, two, in your third one, like that. Chain one and two, and a half double, one, two, in your third one, like that. Chain one and two, and a half double, one, two, in your third one, like that. Chain one and two, and a half double, one, two, in your third one. All right, so one, two, and your half double goes one, two, in your third one. We're getting towards the end there, okay? And then one, two, and don't do a half double now because we are towards the end. If we skip one and two in our third one, we need to put one, two, three, four single crochets across. So skip one and two and pop a single crochet in that third one, one, but, we're not going to do the rest yet because look, we have our button. Okay, we want to do a buttonhole for our button. So there's one. I think that button will probably need about three chains. So one, two, and three. I want to keep two single crochets at the end because I want a solid close. So we're only going to skip one and put a single crochet in that second last stitch right there. One single in your last stitch right there okay i'm just going to pull up a loop you can do the same if you like because you need to make sure that button fits in your little button hole okay now it might fit there now but after the next row is when you can tell better because we're going to be filling up that stitch as well so what we have is another round so you're firstly chaining one turning your work now i'm going to remember to put my stitch marker in single crochet in the first stitch like that and just grab a stitch marker like a naughty girl that i am and pop it in that stitch and that's through the both loops there i'm so naughty forgetting them and a single in your next single crochet because remember there was two there now i know there's three chains here and originally we should put three single crochets but if we did that that's going to make um our it's going to give us extra stitch it's going to put us out of whack so we're only going to be putting one single crochet because really under there there's one single crochet so pop a single crochet around your chains like that yeah and then in your single crochet you're popping a single crochet now things are going to be different here okay you've got half doubles here and two chains in the middle there we are going to be putting three single crochets in that space okay so right around your stitches one two three and we're going to be skipping that half double jumping into your next space with three single crochets two and three whoops three now before you continue all right let's move those beads out the way just check your bead if it fits that button hole thing right there because we've popped a single crochet in there now so if that doesn't fit you're not going to be able to get it through your work and it does perfect all right so just keep doing your three single crochets in every space all the way down avoiding obviously <laughs> the other beads so just keep doing your three single crochets one two and three all the way down your work okay so just keep going and i'll pop this on fast for you all 
All right, here we go. So here we are at the end of the round. I still have another set of three here. So I'm going to pop three in there. One, two, and three. Then we actually have the button here. So just be careful, or the bead, whatever you want to call it. Single crochet in your first. There's four along here. So single crochet one. Single crochet um, in your next. Now that should be really tight because we've been pulling at that. So that's okay. But just get in there. One there. Single in your next. And single in your next. All right. Now, before you continue, just a quick one to let you know, we may have actually added a stitch when we did our single crochet over here somewhere, but that's okay. Don't stress about that. All right. Don't worry about that. Okay. Chaining one, pull a loop through, turn your work. Now, not only is this going to be a bead row, but it's also a very tricky row because we are going to start edging our work. So your bracelet will start looking like, bring it out a bit, will start looking like this, which is the look we're going for. We want it to, to go a bit, bit thinner down here. Now, it means we're going to be needing to use slip stitches. Now, slip stitches, if you do them too tight, you won't be able to continue the stitches which is why I asked you to um, we'll put the orange on that side it's why I asked you to have four colored stitches here all right in your first stitch you're going to put a slip stitch but we're going to do them loosely so pop your hook in pull a loop through now keeping it all loose you're going to pull it through to the loop on your hook and you are going to grab your stitch markers one by one this is the first one obviously and popping it in that little tight slip stitch that you made try not to keep them too tight like that all right you're going to do the same with the next slip stitch pop it in pull a loop through nice and loosely pull it through and you need to pop another stitch marker now all this is doing is keeping your slip stitches open so you know where to slip stitch at the end of the row if you're new. If you're not new and you know what you're doing, you don't need to worry about these stitch markers, okay? Slip stitch into your next stitch nice and loosely, grabbing your stitch marker. I keep throwing them everywhere, don't I? Grabbing your stitch marker and popping it in there, all right? Again, this isn't necessary Okay, it's just a little tip for newbies. And slip stitch into your fourth one right there. All right, so there's your fourth. That's your fourth, four, I should say, slip stitches. Now, you're going to single crochet across. But not just single crochet across, we're going to be adding beads again, okay? So now remember how we did it before. We did our four single crochets, one, two, three, four. We want to keep everything in sync. So now we're going to put a bead in our next stitch. We're not going to put a chain. We're going to do single crochet, one, two, and three. All right. So in this stitch here, we need to bring up a bead. So let's bring up a bead. Bring it out a little bit for you. Let's bring up a little bead right there. And we are going to single crochet in that very first stitch oh let me get close for you around the bead just in that first stitch pull it nice and tight for that one well as tight as you can get it because we've got stitch markers everywhere here and then one two and three like that let me show you what you've done your beads should be almost directly opposite each other give or take half a centimeter let's try a millimeter give or take half a millimeter okay so they should be directly opposite each other with a little space in between yeah all right now we're going to do another bead yet again one more right there Right there. 
nice and tight a single crochet there okay now three single crochet across one two and three and then you grab yet again another bead right there whoops <laughs> if it would stay still for me <laughs> we could do it this is a big one this one and if, because it's a big one you have to make sure you tighten that up if it's a big one on yours it is on mine <laughs> three across one two and three bringing your bead down laxa going oh it's a bit tight that stitch i don't know what i've done there very tight all right now we're going to go around the bead tighten it up and there you go single three across one two and three and bead whoops there really are tight stitches some of them <laughs> Just pull that bead down and pull it through, tighten it up, and then three single crochets. One, two, and a three, and a bead. It would have been better to have used all the same beads, okay? This is a little bit different, a little bit odd, but it's okay. We don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mind okay so one two and three and here is another bead oh, I think that's our last bead oh yes it is how about that okay so pop your stitch in there like so and then we go one, two, and this should be your third one, but it should also be the start of the last four stitches in your row. So you should have one, two, three, and four. You're not going to be putting single crochets here. You're going to be putting slip stitches to make it even on this side right here with all your gazillion stitch markers so you're going to do that but what you're going to do is do it nice and loosely slip stitch into oops don't lose it like i just did slip stitch into your first stitch like so grab your stitch markers your orange colors or whatever colors you're using it doesn't matter they're just stitch markers whoops now whoops fiddly with all the beads isn't it now <laughs> slip stitch into your next stitch like so pop that stitch marker in like so slip stitch into your next stitch like so remembering to keep them loose don't do them tight and you're going to be slip stitching into the last stitch so you need to take out that stitch marker to do this Especially when it comes to slip stitching for this end of the row that is not for all of them and slip stitch into that stitch marker there now the reason i got you to pop your stitch markers in in fact you would have been better off putting one in the first one because that really is a tight one chain one loosely turn your work now you're going back into that stitch right there the first one i'm sorry let's try the last one you just made don't split it right there okay pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook with a slip stitch popping your stitch marker back in there okay and you're going to slip stitch into your very next stitch where your stitch marker is pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook taking out your stitch marker now again if you are a professional at crochet you don't need stitch markers here this is to show the newbies where to put the next slip stitch in in fact you need to pop that stitch marker in the one you just made to take it out of it to put it into it <laughs> the top one all right again not necessary 
lengths, but you need to know that you are slip stitching in the right spot. So pop your hook in and you're going to slip stitch where your hook is. Right there. Okay, it's a bit tight, my one there. So slip stitch in there like so. Take that stitch marker out and pop it into the stitch we just made. All right, like so. A little tricky, not necessary to use them if you don't want to, but I think the newbies need to know exactly where to slip stitch into. So you give it a tug, you find it, and you slip stitch into it like that there. All right, take your stitch marker out of that one. Oops, and pop it right back into the oops, the stitch you just made. All right, there you go. All right, from here, you're going straight into your very next stitch with single crochets. Off you go. Like we did earlier when we did the first row of beads, we did a row of single crochets after them, like so. Making sure you're getting every stitch. The bonus is we don't have any more beads dangling off them, so it's an absolute bonus. <laughs> oh. All right, so there we go. So I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do them. There you go. Single crochet all the way across until you get to, and let me show you, your stitch marker, your very first stitch marker you come to until you get to that stitch marker and meet me there, okay? All right, so here we are at the end of the row. If you're anything like me, you actually do have another single crochet to pop in just before your stitch markers. That's where the bead is, so don't miss that one or you'll be one short. So pop in your single crochet and now you've got your stitch markers. This is where you need to slip stitch across. And you're slip stitching in those stitch markers right there. See, if you didn't have those stitch markers, you would find yourself slip stitching in the front stitch. You don't want that. You want to go through those two loops of the stitch markers, which are really tight for me. <laughs> oh dear, here we go. I thought I did mine loose, but I lied. Oh, you know why? Because the bead is there. Pop your hook in. Take the stitch marker out. That might help now. And just softly slip stitch across and pop your stitch marker in there don't pull too tight on that stitch you're going to love the next round by the way but here we go let's get into that very next stitch with a tight stitch there with a slip stitch all the way through to your work a nice loose one that's probably too loose give it a little bit of a tug I mean you want it loose but you don't want it too loose where it's you know the thread is sticking out or something you don't want that it doesn't look right does it okay so slip stitch into your next stitch right there take that stitch marker out and pop it in here Put the stitch mark the stitch that we just made black saw Last one. Now we're going to slip stitch in there. That might be a little tight. It might be all right, we'll see. Oh, mine was a little bit tight, not too much. And there you go, take out that stitch marker. You won't need that. And slip stitch through that stitch there. Chain one, turn your work. Go right back into that stitch that you just made. Pull a loop through slip stitch there you're not putting a stitch marker in anymore go into the very next stitch pull a loop through slip stitch there take out that stitch marker you don't need it anymore go into your next stitch <laughs> a tight stitch oh my gosh <laughs> pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook Just tighten it up a little bit and the same into your next Slip stitch into your last slip stitch, like so. Oh, and pull out that stitch marker, by the way, guys. Which is right now. Very fiddly, but it's only, this is the last part of it, so don't stress. Into that next stitch, you're going to be slip stitching. 
all the way across your row. What? And you don't have to worry about it being tight or loose or anything. Just slip stitch. Crazy, huh? Crazy, crazy, crazy. You've already done your single crochet row, so you don't need to worry about that. Just slip stitch all the way across. All the way, all the way. Put this on fast for you so that you don't have to sit here and watch me doing this until we get to the orange stitch markers. Alrighty, how'd you go guys? Good? <laughs> Alright, I'm right near that slip stitch right there. Alright, this is the very last four slip stitches. So, just grab your hook, pull it through, pull it through to the loop on your hook. You don't need that stitch marker anymore. Do it again, the other one. Right next to it. Pull the loop through. And yes, you don't need that stitch marker anymore. Into <laughs> the next stitch, which just doesn't want to let me in. <laughs> there, like so. And you don't need a that stitch marker anymore. And of course you have one last stitch left. I'm taking that stitch marker out now because I'm just angry with it. <laughs> I'm so grumpy. Okay, here we go. Pull that loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook. Make a loop or a chain and pull it up. All right, and just hold it there for a minute. Check your work. Are you happy? Are you happy with your work? I am pretty happy. Pretty happy. Guess what? You're done. <laughs> You're thinking, what? That's all you needed to do. Grab your scissors, give your work a cut. If you want to do something else, by all means you can. But we are now officially done. Now, before we weave in these ends, I'm going to pop it on so you can have a look at it. Bring it out a little bit. So you can have a look see. If I can get it on with one hand, you know what it's like when you're doing jewellery. I'm not really a big jewellery fan. Heads up, guys. But there you go. Oh, there you go. There's my little bead, and there is my bracelet. What? <laughs> so I'm going to take that undone because we haven't really finished. No, not really. We need to weave in some ends, all right? Now, it was a fiddly project. Would I work with beads again? Mm, probably not. <laughs> I did, however, promise you an anklet and a necklace, so we may have to do that next time. I think next time I will choose the beads though, um, because I want to keep it all in sync next time, because an, a bracelet is okay to have, you know, a little them dangling down and so on, but a necklace and a anklet, I'd like to keep it kind of in sync. All right, so here we are. This is the very first um, thread that we did. You can weave this in any way you like. I'm just going to pop it in um, a stitch well, maybe I'll pop it in one of the stitches. This is underneath the work, by the way. This is under your beads, the back of your beads. So just pull it through one of the loops there, like so. Whoops. Like so. That's it. And that's closed up your work there. Then you're going to grab this little thread and you are going to weave it in and out of your slip stitches. Now this hook, this try needle is a little bit not good. <laughs> I wanted to say another word, but I didn't want to say another word. And I didn't know what I was talking about. But let's just say not good or blunt, if you will. <laughs> There's no point to it, which is a good thing because I, you know, find myself always stabbing that finger every time <laughs> I use the sewing needle. I stab my fingers and, you know, my regulars would know that. But there we go. And we're going through a third time. So this is a third time, but I feel like, because it's not sharp enough, that that's not good enough. Oh, no, it's not bad. Pull that loop right through, giving your work 
a cut. Just give it a tug and your thread falls into line and you can't see it at the front there. Then you're going to do the same with this one. My needle's here. I made a big mess here. I've got stuff everywhere now. I threw my stitch markers when I was taking them out. <laughs> I'll just show you the mess next time. But I throw them. <laughs> Don't tell these um, subscribers that, but I do throw them. Okay, so let's just pop... Oh, that looks like it's gone through too much. Oh, no, that's all right. Just pop it through that first stitch you see there. Oh, it's not long enough. Here, let's pull that out a bit. Yep. And then all you're doing is, again, weaving it in. Now, this side here doesn't have slip stitches, so weave it in wherever you feel comfortable. And I'm just going to find my blunt needle. I'm not really happy with this needle. <laughs> Never happy with the sharp ones because they pin me all the time. Okay, pull that through like so. And there you go. All right. Just being weary, check your front when you're doing this. Make sure you're not... It doesn't really matter because... We're going through stitches with the same colour, so it's not too noticeable. And it's the button side, so it's going to be tucked under your work anyways. Um, when, you, when you tie it up or button it up, it's going to be tucked under, so it doesn't really matter. But I think that's really thick, and I'm worried it's gone straight through. No, no, it's okay. Now, as you noticed, I did it three times. That's the best bid. Your best bid is to do it three times. All right, and there you go. Your bead work is done. Perfect. There's a button and there's a button hole right there. And we're going to pop it on now. Let's bring that out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, I always hate putting jewellery on. It's so awkward. <laughs> when you're trying to do it with one hand, it's really awkward. And I'm not a big jewellery fan, so I don't usually do it. Okay, we could have probably made this a little bit longer, like seven or eight stitches, but I only did four. And I didn't want to have it too bulky, so I thought I'd leave it to four. And there you go. Ta-da! There's your bracelet. It's very nice. <laughs> and i got plenty of room in there to play with. Not that I need it, but there you go. So if I put on a little bit of weight, which is most likely, but don't tell the subscribers that. Um, <laughs> it's all those Tim Tams. <laughs> if I put on a little bit of weight, there's plenty of room. That can go right up even if I wanted it to. But no, I want it to be on my wrist. And it does move a little bit. If you find it, it's too loose, just pull it up a bit. Tight and it won't move. Tighten it up a little more, but I think it's fine just like this. Ta-da! <laughs> pull that button through. That's better. <laughs> pull it through properly, Mary. There you go. Cool. Thank you so much for watching, guys. <laughs> Don't forget to uh, join us on our lives uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, Wednesday afternoons and 10 a.m. Saturday mornings, Melbourne, Australia time, that is, where we discuss all our projects that we do during the week. And we also discuss some of the things that the subscribers, let's get them both out here, themselves are able to choose our colour combinations or our kinds of projects that we do here on the channel. And remember how I showed you how to do this? Look at my scribble. <laughs> I practiced it so many times because no matter how I did it, it wouldn't work. But there you go. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you guys pretty much already do for me. And all I want to say right now is, ah, oh, gorgeous. <laughs> Ciao for now.